I have not filmed this professionally in a long time, but, um, <laughs> hi, welcome to my official RISD video. I got accepted to RISD regular decision for the class of 2022. I'm gonna do my best to try to cover everything I need to cover. I'm gonna go through my portfolio, my, like, statistics, I guess, so, like, my grades, and then also, lastly, what else am I gonna go over? Oh, like, other things you can do to help you get in, I guess. So the way RISD works is that all of our application for the portfolio part is on slide room. Keep your portfolio in like your high school career range because I feel like that's more accurate. And also like they want to see that you've improved your art, but I don't think they care about like your middle school. I don't know, that's just what I thought. And I still have mine pulled up so I can go through like exactly what I put in my, I just realized I'm missing a sketchbook that I need to make this video. Okay, hold on, let me go get that. Okay, hi, I didn't realize that this spanned over some new sketchbooks. So I want to go through everything in my portfolio first and then we'll cover everything else. I'm gonna put all of the names, like the titles of the pieces, like down here because I, I personally hate titling my art. Like I I feel like it's like the cringiest thing because I never know what to like title it. The first piece that I submitted was a self-portrait. It's in an exhibition for Scholastic. So um you can see it here. So it's Prisma color and it's also this like metallic -y gold like marker thing. I don't know what it's called. And so I submitted this one. I submitted a lot of pieces to show that I could draw faces because I feel like, I don't know, that's important to me when I'm judging someone's artwork if you can draw like human proportional things. So that's mostly why I did that. So the next one is this really small piece called Glitch and it's in my sketchbook from so long ago. It's like this big. So clearly it's, it's not this. This isn't, this is in there, but it's not yet. It's this tiny little thing. And I'm like actually surprised that like I ended up putting it in here, but I applied as an illustration major. And so this is more of like my illustrative stuff. This is a really spooky thing, but I put like a lot of detail into it considering how small it is. This one's with Copic and Microns. So it's, it's like, I don't know, uh, illustration, I guess. I still like this one surprisingly, cause I like the color, I like the yellow and the blue mixing together. I feel like that looks really cool. So then the next piece is this piece. I mean, I should have cropped it. Like, I cropped it in the picture, but I didn't crop it in real life. And it's drawings from life, and it's, this is my friend's cat. I don't know, I feel like cats are easier to draw because they, they kind of sleep for a long time. I try to do a lot of life studies as I was starting to do college applications because I was like, they find this important. Whoops, I don't have a lot of that. And also, it's just a good skill to have, but I kind of stopped practicing it a while ago, so I... That's that. Okay, see, I don't know where this piece is because it's from my freshman year. However, comma, it's, it's somewhere in my house. I did this and it was a still life and it's a saddle, which I think a lot of people can't tell for some reason, but I guess like I get it because I feel like it doesn't really look like a saddle. Uh, considering it was for freshman year, I feel like it's not that bad. Next, where is it at? So I did these, am I gonna get demonetized for this? Probably. I actually have three of them, but I don't know what the third one is, but it's these It's these naked people and these were drawn I can't draw them from life because to take life figure study classes You have to be 18 and I wasn't 18 at the time because you know, I'm applying for college. I'm not 18 yet So my point is I couldn't do these from life, but if you can Oh my god, please do it from life. I would love to take a figure study class, but I could not so I submitted only one of these I submitted this one these took me like 15 20 minutes they're they're oil on um like a like oil paint paper but i don't know if that's legit it's the arches brand if you want to look for it because i was just like i didn't need to finish them or make them look real i just wanted to show that i like understood color and i understood how it worked so that's why i submitted that i think it'd be good to submit a few figure drawings just because by the time you're like a senior in high school and you're applying to art college, you've probably done a few anyways. So just submit one you like, at least one. Okay, this one is a 3D piece. As you can see, it's ceramic and I made it in my AP 3D art class at school. This piece was really fun to do. I actually really like this despite how many hours it took. This one took me so long. It was part of my concentration, which um, if you're interested to see, let me know and I'll make a video on my AP 3D concentration. It was mostly just to show that I could work with 3D. So for art, I've kind of done a little bit of everything. So I like to like slide in sneakily some like 
3D stuff. This was the only 3D piece I submitted aside from the RISD assignment. Then I have this piece from one of my sketchbooks. I haven't looked at this sketchbook in a long time, so I honestly don't know where anything is in here. Okay, so I submitted this piece. I really like the blue with the touch of like a corally color, I guess, and then a um like a macaroni orange, as Crayola would call it. I really like the color combination, and I liked how um the markers are sheer, so when you drew on the blue paper, you could like see through it, and I thought that was a cool effect. One, two, three, four, five, six. I drew six boys, all stacked on top of each other, and I mostly submitted this because this was like a weird style I was doing at the time, where I would draw in pencil and I would do like cross hatching and then I would use a micron to go through and do like a graphic liner on everything and I thought that was really cool at the time. I just liked it like aesthetically, partially the composition and partially the color palette that I used. I just thought it looked really nice. Okay, this one I do have but it's in a giant frame so I didn't want to bring it up here but uh, I actually made a vlog about this. If you want to see it, click the eye up here. This is a piece that I did my sophomore year. It was like part of my concentration where I took a bunch of these like master copies that I did and I uh, graffitied over them to show that like graffiti is still art even though like a lot of places not considered art. So I took a Frida Kahlo self-portrait but not one of the like super well-known ones. A like lesser known one I guess if Frida Kahlo can be any lesser known than she is. I took one of those and I did a master copy of it and it's Prismacolor and the background is watercolor slash wash. And then I airbrushed on top of it instead of using actual spray paint. I loved how it came out at first and then I was impartial to it and then it won something pretty big. So then I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'll touch on that in the next part. Like other things you can do to get into RISD. I'll touch on that later. This was a terrible idea to do in a, this sketchbook. This sketchbook is uh, marker paper, so it doesn't bleed through and the marker stays where you put it. This sketchbook that I chose to use stupidly is not marker paper, so everything bled through the back, which isn't a big deal, except when you color, it's so difficult to stay in the lines because it does this on the back, so like the marker spreads. I was stubborn and I chose to do it in the sketchbook. When I draw comics, I like to use a light box, so this was the... I put a plastic sheet over it so the graphite doesn't transfer over. This is like the draft, I guess. And then after that, I transferred it onto here through a light box. I wanted to do this mostly to show I could do storytelling, even though I, I really can't because this is my first time ever wholeheartedly designing an entire comic. Like, I don't know how, I still don't know how to do that. I somehow finessed my way through this and made it look not too bad collectively. After I submitted that terrible comic, I submitted this piece from my sophomore year concentration as well. And this is just a master copy. I initially did do like a spray paint thing, but then I covered it over because I hated it. So that's why like this part of the sky is randomly pink because I was just like, I'll just leave that part, no one will notice. But now that I pointed it out to you, I hope everyone notices. Here's my copy and here's like the original one and I think it did a pretty good job. This took me three days because I was really rushed for the AP exam and my friend at the time said that I would never finish so I got really salty and I cranked this up in three days. So it's not it's not my best but it's also pretty impressive in my opinion, like judging by how fast I work. The next piece I did was this one, which is also slightly, I hit myself in the face. Which is also illustrative. This is in um, Chinatown in Boston. I submitted this one mostly to show that I could do the architecture, I guess, of the of the like the top part. I almost never draw landscapes and I almost never draw like cities. So um, yeah, I wanted to show that I could at least do it, even if I didn't like to do it. I still forced myself to do it for my portfolio just to show like my full range of what I'm capable of. Next piece is I think in this one. This was a really random thing I decided to do in like the middle of the day one day. And this was in like 2017 and it's not even that good, but I thought the idea of it was pretty cool. It was more of a like fun activity I decided to do that ended up being not so bad and I just put in my portfolio. The one that I showed you earlier low key, but so, you know, it's fine, we'll be busy with it. This is um, a copy of the swing. Like the style that I was doing at the time where I would try to incorporate like as many colors as I could for like the color palette of each object but then I would continue to outline it in a very graphic liner and I would make it look really bold and cute. I was very surprised by the like how nice this actually turned out so I decided to put it in my portfolio because I needed more illustrated pieces. Next piece is this one which is also something I should have cropped but I didn't in real life. 
This is my actual friend Holly. Like I said, it's pretty important to draw from life. And so I tried to do as many as I could. And this one was one of the ones that turned out pretty good. So I just decided to slip that in there. I don't really like to do conceptual pieces. I like to do more of a like technical piece. So I like to show my skill. And so when I finished this one and it didn't turn out as good as I thought it was going to, I was like pretty upset about it and I just decided like I'm never going to look at this ever again. So despite this not being like the best thing I've ever drawn and it's lacking in so many areas including like the colors and the and just the like composition and just, just so much of it is lacking. I thought conceptually it wasn't all that bad and that it was it was pretty cute and the technical skill isn't terrible, so I decided to include it. These are hot air balloons that look like little strawberries, so I thought that was pretty, like, pretty creative. So then I did another master copy. I did so many. This was also oil on that weird paper thing. I don't know, I did this one in probably two or three days, because if you actually look at it, I only really focus on the face. Like, the hair and the, like, curls and the whatever, everything else is just highly debatable as to how much time I spent on it. I probably spent, like, two minutes finishing this after I did the face. So then I have some animals. I have a tendency to forget that animals exist, so I don't draw them very much, even though I should. This was in my most recent sketchbook at the time, and so this was one of my most recent works. And so here's a little chickens. They're pretty cute. I really like the um, eye for this chicken specifically, so I thought it was good enough to submit. Like I said, I don't have any animals in this entire thing, so I tried to slide in the very few that I had. The next piece I have is somewhere in my household. I did this my my junior year, I think, and it was like one of like the worst things I've ever painted. Like I tried to be super colorful, but it just didn't work out properly. Not knowing a single thing about color theory and obviously just messing it all up. And I've had a lot of people like give me critiques on it and be like, oh, it looks really nice, except the color's wrong, and I've had someone tell me like the anatomy's wrong, and I personally don't think it's that good either, so I just wasn't very into it, but I thought the concept was pretty good. And it also has the perspective, it has foreshortening, which I don't think is in any of my other pieces. So this is a comic that I slaved over for about 12 hours the day my applications were due. It was a terrible idea, but this is the only piece I have that's digital because I've just very, very recently started getting into digital art. I decided to include this just to show, like, I can do digital, I have the ability, I guess, kind of, or at least I have the ability to learn. So this is a true story about my parents, and it's really cute. I tried to show, like, a sequence of running in part of it, if you can see, and that was, like, pretty important to me, because I was just like, wow, it's almost like animation. Oh my god, okay, this piece. Don't get me started, except you're about to. This piece is huge. So this is two feet by three feet. Mom, um, I can't even fit this in here, but it's a giant octopus, and this is my baby. This was all in just black and white ink, so I'll let the picture do it justice. It's, it's an octopus. That's all it is. It's just an octopus, but it's a huge octopus. And the paper background has a blue base, and then it has like a gold water marbling thing on it, which I thought was really cool. The gold peeking through and like kind of like distorting the ink on top of it made it look pretty cool. And I was like, all right, whatever. And I airbrushed the background so you see the like the black corner and stuff, like that's airbrushed. It took me, I want to say like two or three months. That one took me a while. Seeing it up close is much better than seeing it as a picture because I put so much detail into it. I drew like every single little like tentacle thing and I drew every single like little bubble thing. So it was very stressful. So this is one of the last like life studies I did. And this is just a guy at a cafe. It's whatever. It's black and white and then I put some like sepia brown into the man to make him stand out more. And I, I just kinda like the composition of it despite having terrible contrast between the man and the background. Like I'm I'm well aware that he barely stands out. But I I chose to submit it anyways. <laughs> And somehow it worked. Yeah, I did this at Starbucks really fast and it was really awkward because my ex was there working and he was just like staring me down. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm trying to cram for college. So, <laughs> fun story there. That's that. Cool story, bro. And then my last master copy that I did is what I titled The Man. I don't know why I titled it this. 
And this is really small. Uh, just a master copy of some old guy that I know nothing about and I know nothing about the artist. And I'm sorry, I don't know any art history. I know I am the worst. That was my like portfolio. And then RISD has their assignment, which is also technically part of the portfolio. So you have your portfolio and then you have your RISD assignment. And the way the RISD assignment works is it changes every year. And for this year, I think our options were plastic, collect, and threshold. I picked plastic because I felt like everyone was going to try to do one of the other ones and try to make it have like a deeper meaning kind of thing. And I just really wanted to go like straightforward with it. So I picked plastic and I actually did plastic. There is like a hidden meaning in my works for my RISD assignment, but it's, it's, it's not. It's not that like dramatic, I guess, as to like, or far-fetched as if I were to pick something else and I, I try to force it to be something it's not, which I didn't want to do. I picked plastic, like I said, and you had to make two responses. So the first response that I did was this whale sculpture because I'm not a very like, I can do 3D, but I'm very limited in my knowledge of 3D. I have like slightly above average common sense on how to assemble like a 3D sculpture. So what I did was I got a bunch of things and somehow made like a, the skeleton of a whale and I just glued a bunch of plastic on it and I made sure everything was blue and that's pretty much what I did. I put some lights in there and I put some lights on there. I, <laughs> I filmed this video really late at night trying to like cram in everything. I just hoped that they would understand what it was and I think they did. It was a hanging installation piece. I don't do installation art, ever. If you've seen those pictures of like ocean creatures getting cut open and their tummy is full of like plastic and stuff because they ate all of it and it's, pollution is terrible. It's kind of like a commentary on that except it's like reversed so that the whale is made out of plastic because mankind is like forcing pollution onto these creatures that deserve it. I think I wrote about it in the description very briefly, but it was more of a like, mostly just, hey, look at this sparkly whale. It's pretty cute. But also, I, I made sure to have them know like, that I have some IQ points and I could give it a concept with a full story. And then my next piece that I did for my response was a more traditional my style art. So this is still kind of illustrative because it's like a magazine cover kind of thing. This is, this is the art I did. It's this girl holding a plastic bag full of two goldfish, and the most important part of this is the reflection onto her face, in my opinion. That's like why I cared about drawing it the most was because I wanted to show that I could like draw the reflections on a face and like understand the anatomy and you know. The plastic is doing the reflection, so that's how it tied to plastic. But also, I put a lot of dirt in the bag and I made the water look polluted so that it was still relevant to the whole like pollution thing that I was doing. So I wanted to make sure that was still there. And I think the message got through, but it was mostly to show my skill level of drawing people. There was that. That was my portfolio, guys. I hope you liked it. Now, let's talk about me as if we haven't been already. Here are my stats of my GPA and my SAT score, I guess. Um, my SAT score really doesn't reflect my GPA, however, it still fit the RISD requirements. I took AP 2D as a sophomore, AP Drawing as a junior, and AP 3D as a senior. So I took all of the AP art classes that were available at my school, and I got a 5 on all of the portfolios. So there was that. I've also won a lot of awards and so I think that really helped me in getting in because I could give them like my resume and you could really see like everything I've done. If you want me to go into slight detail, here are all my awards. So this was for Allstate, Scholastic, my sophomore year, the Governor Honors Program, which was actually really important to me because I was an art major. Scholastic again, and then I got a gold medal for that. Scholastic again, senior year, and then I got three silver medals, which is biggest L I've ever taken in my life, but it's fine. Um, I've applied and won a lot of competitions throughout my high school career and also just as a child because my art studio really pushed that on me. So I think that was really important in me getting in 
because I had a really good resume that showed I was like capable of doing this and I've been doing this for a long time and that I've been recognized for doing this. And so if you are applying, I would say I think Scholastic is a national thing. So if you live in the United States, definitely would recommend Scholastic Art and Writing. They're a great competition. I remember that when the results actually came out for Scholastic, RISD personally told us that they received the results as well so that we didn't have to add it to our resume. So I know RISD also cares about Scholastic a lot and that it recognizes it. So if you don't know what to do for competitions, at least do Scholastic, just give it a try. There's regional and national awards that you can win, so you can work your way up. So yeah, I also went to Portfolio Day, which was very stressful. For reasons I'm not gonna talk about, I wasn't able to go see RISD at my local Portfolio Day, so my dad had me fly out to Boston to go to their Portfolio Day where I met RISD. And the RISD alumni, teacher, person in charge of the whole table thing was so nice. He really liked me. Like, he really liked my art. He stood there for 45 minutes just talking to me. He was so excited. I don't know if he does that to everyone, but I'd like to think that I was special. I would recommend going to Portfolio Day because they can actually give you like real advice about your portfolio. I would recommend not going as a senior, which is what I did because I was a bit too late. You should probably go when you're a junior if you already know that you want to go to RISD. Do Portfolio Day. Portfolio Day is so important. It's like one of the only ways that RISD will give you direct criticism for your work. Portfolio Day is a really good resource and if you are able to submit to any competitions, do like all of them. Just do all of them, because why wouldn't you? If you have any questions, let me know. I am attending RISD, by the way, uh, in case that wasn't obvious. More videos to come from Rhode Island School of Design. I'm so excited. I also got like a pretty good scholarship. My parents aren't allowing me to say how much it was, but let's just say it was a lot. So, <laughs> so I think RISD ended up really liking me, which was very fortunate of me to find a school that fits so well with me and that I fit so well with. So I think that's also really important not to try to force yourself to go to a school that doesn't want you and that if they don't want you, it's okay. There's plenty of schools. I'm a skedaddle. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too boring and I hope it helped you a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I will answer anything you guys want to know. And yeah, if you're applying to RISD for 2023 or any other year, good luck. Uh, I hope art school applications don't stress you out because despite what everyone says, art school is art school is not easy. So, cool, dude. All right, bye, guys.